Hey everybody, Jesse Roberts with Compass IT Compliance and Compass CyberGuard here to go over what is AI. So, uh, let's go ahead and talk about this. Short form for the term artificial intelligence. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Um, what it is in simple terms is it's a bunch of different technologies layered together to make computers behave in a way that humans do. It's meant to mimic the decision-making process humans do, and it does this by having uh, access to large data sets for processing and creating all sorts of data, right, on its own. Now, it does this using very powerful graphics processing units and other technology. One of the reasons why that NVIDIA stock shot up crazy in the year uh, 2024 here, hopefully somebody got in on that, wasn't me. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what AI is built off of, um, all these different technologies, often referred to as also large language models. There's a lot of great information out there. IBM has put up a great white paper. I highly reference uh, it in a lot of different cases. So kind of moving on, um, it's not true artificial intelligence, meaning it's not sentient. It doesn't uh, make decisions on its own necessarily. It can't uh, form its own opinions, right? Um, it's not that Skynet thing that we're afraid of from the Terminator movies, uh, killing everybody, running rampages. Um, so it's only programmed in a way uh, it's meant to. Uh, it's programmed to respond uh, to us the way that the developers or the person who put out the application wants it to, right? So again, it's not it's not like its own thing. It doesn't have its own opinions or thoughts. Um, and it is a program that we tell it what to do, just like any other program out there. Um, there are great advances being made, uh, but again, it's still a computer program. Um, these are kind of broken down into two general categories here, the different types of AI. Artificial narrow intelligence, taught to do one task. Uh, Siri, Alexa, self-driving cars, things like that. That is some level of AI. Uh, very simple, but only meant to do one thing. We're moving now into the artificial general intelligence, kind of, you know, these terms were not quite there, but close. So these tools like uh, the applications like, again, ChatGPT and these other ones on the next page uh, are really kind of meant to um, replicate humans, right? Or even um, respond like humans do as well, right? So some example AI programs that we have here, Microsoft Copilot, uh, Google's Gemini, X's Grok, uh, Claude, it's kind of its own thing. It is also built off of the ChatGPT model. Uh, ChatGPT from OpenAI. Uh, OpenAI Code Playgrounds and DocLime are just some of the example AI programs I'll be highlighting here for you in the next few minutes. And we're going to kind of just highlight their use, how they're different, um, maybe some con security concerns around these types of programs and their use within an organization or even just on a personal level. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples right now. Here I have Microsoft's Copilot, and I went ahead and I asked it what could some consider a controversial topic. I said, "Is Taiwan a part of China?" Um, ultimately, it gave Something me a wrong. Let's try again. <laughs> hilarious itself. Um, uh, as I'm speaking, my phone registered uh, that I was trying to talk to uh, itself. Siri, crazy stuff right there. Hopefully, everybody heard that in the background. Um, but anyway. Um, it kind of goes ahead through and it talks about how Taiwan is officially known as part of the Republic of China. But overall, it just says it uh, gives us a lot of different background. And it says, um, in summary, the uh, PRC, People's Republic of China, claims t Taiwan by Taiwan is saying, hey, we maintain our own distinct identity. We pose the same question to Gemini. Is Taiwan a part of China? It's a complex issue, it says. But ultimately... Uh, what Gemini ended up saying in really kind of a short format without a lot of good information is that uh, most countries do not formally recognize Taiwan as an independent country and it is part of the People's Republic of China. That is my interpretation of what Gemini is saying. So uh, again, a different answer and not as much information from uh, Copilot. ChatGPT had a very similar um, answer to Microsoft Copilot. Um, basically kind of came to the same conclusion that a while China claims it, Taiwan operates on its own. Kind of moving on to the Grok platform, which again is Twitter's. Uh, reading into this a little bit, uh, kind of the same thing that Copilot and uh, ChatGPT said. Uh, I do like its little summary here, though. In short, the question of whether Taiwan is part of China is a bit like asking if a hot dog is a sandwich. It depends on who you ask and what criteria you're using. So that's a pretty straight up honest answer. So again, 
those are four different, you know, uh, AI type programs um, that we asked a very specific question to, and we got um, basically two different answers. It seemed like the Gemini, Google's Gemini program was more, hey, no, it's part of China, and the other three were like, ah, it kind of depends on who you ask, but, you know, it kind of sided more with Taiwan and my interpretation of it, but you may interpret it a little bit differently. But again, so each one was programmed to say something differently or uh, respond differently. And again, that's why it's important for organizations before they start using any type of AI program to kind of understand um, what it's programmed to do. And, uh, you know, is it in line with what you're trying to achieve? Um, another kind of interesting thing to note is I don't necessarily know right off the rip what uh, programs are um, used and what privacy policies policies are behind these programs. Um, so it, I have to be careful if I'm entering in company data or any type of company information that might be proprietary to help me along with my job. So also kind of keep that in mind. And before you know, try to uh, take a look at the privacy policy for each one of these. Um, Microsoft has a really uh, great rundown when you click on it um, for its co-pilot. I highly recommend uh, reading it and it kind of explains to you how the whole uh, co-pilot program works. Okay, let's take another look at a couple of different AI tools here. This one specifically is an AI tool, but you can also um, upload images to it. Um, I went ahead and I told this is the Claude AI. I went ahead and I was in this scenario. I'm an HR person and I wanted to make my job easier. I have all these social security numbers that I have to upload into our uh, employee record system, um, right? But I wanted to just put them all on a, a copier upload them to uh, this Claude and have it extract the text from there so I could easily import it into my other application. Well, luckily here I have the social security number. Uh, Claude immediately uh, detected it as some sort of privacy issue and it says it cannot ethically extract or disclose any personal information. That's great that this Claude program is doing that. However, on the, on the other flip side of this, do I really know that this Claude program isn't going to um, hold this image forever? And if this is a real social security card, is it now in Claude's database? To be honest, I don't know because I didn't do any due diligence. And, you know, your employees out there could be doing the same thing. You don't know because none of these programs have been vetted. Now, let's move over to another tool called DocLime. DocLime, and again, I have this stage for us here, so we don't have to wait around, uh, is used to upload PDFs for analysis and extract data from PDFs. Um, in this particular case, I uploaded a PDF with um, sensitive information, and now it's now processed on this DocLine product, and it's stored in their database forever, right? Or at least until I figure out that the data is in there, and I tell it to delete it, and hopefully they delete it permanently. But again, I do not know because I didn't do my due diligence, and this is just, again, another free AI platform out there that anybody has access to. So in this particular case, I uh, added an API key uh, to this PDF document that talks about API testing. But if we look at the document itself about what is an API example, our API key is this, remove before publish. So we were supposed to remove this and whoever did, did not. And now a potentially sensitive piece of data is out there on an unsanctioned AI program. Okay, and now finally, let's take a look at it, the example of, hey, um, we're a company, we're in development, we're getting sick of paying all these senior developers all this money when we heard AI can just do it. Well, let's take a look at an, an example of what a AI program can produce as far as development goes. Now, this is a very simple example, but I basically prompted this playground. I said, hey, I need a web login written in .NET with a SQL backend. And certainly it responds to me, but kind of going down, it tells me all the code. This is great. I could simply implement this code as a junior developer, replacing all these senior developers, and I'll have the, the start of a great web application. Well, the problem with that is, is that this particular code, right, doesn't protect against something called SQL injection. And since we fired all our senior developers, they're not going to be able to vet this and make sure that this is coded properly. So again, introducing a huge security incident into your organization because you want to use AI to replace uh, a human and you didn't quite know what the AI's function was. So in summary, I would just kind of like to say um, that 
you know, AI is out there, um, but we have to look at a couple different things um, to protect ourselves. So kind of kind of things that we can do to protect ourselves, you know, ask, uh, you want to have an AI policy in place and educate your employees on proper use of AI, uh, define a business goal for your AI use case, and block access to unauthorized programs. And uh, feel free to reach out to us at Compass IT Compliance. We have a great program um, set up to, uh, you know, kind of combat some of these issues and, and policies and, and things of that nature. Thank you. Goodbye.